Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Today is April 12th, 2024, and it sees the new release. Here's to do a review of the new release of the new Ben Sinister album, uh, Mostly Great Things. Got the image up here. Um, I just grabbed all my all my Ben Sinister. If you don't know them, I've done a couple a number of videos, talked about them many times, but did one video a couple years ago that covered. They have all these CDs, Small Fame from 2012. I, when I see them, I just pick them up because I know they're just, it makes me sad sometimes. Like, Through the Broken City in 2005. That was sort of like a debut album. Uh, Stories of Brothers, Tales of Lovers from 2008. Ben Sinister EP from 2007. Animals from 2014. On my mind EP. And the, uh, the other way from 2017 EP. And their most recent full length was Foolish Games from 2018. Um, of course, I've got the animals and the uh, small fame vinyl right here. Um, so, yeah, it's a follow up. Their last thing they really released was an EP in the year 2020 called Why Can't We Be Happy, and which has a number of good songs on it, especially that song, I'm Tired. Um, so, the new album is called Mostly Great Things, and. It has 12 tracks on it. I believe 12, yeah. Um, and eight of the 12 songs, for better or for worse, I mean, some people don't like to listen to advanced singles, or some people take the approach that I, that I take often with them, is unless the song is just so demandingly good. I like to, like, I know the album's coming, I'll listen to it one or two times, a little bit. If they have a video for it, maybe I'll watch it, and that's in their case. But then I want to hear the whole record. Um, Eight of those 12 tracks, two, three, or actually four double singles. Three double singles were released last summer over like July, August, September, something like that. Or it was like July, September, October. And then another two were released back in February. I think it was February. It was early March. I think it was February. Um, and then so the four other songs ended up on, on, this, on the full length. So. Um, so I knew it. I mean, I'd heard most of these songs, not all of them, but I hadn't really listened to them dramatic, tons of times. So I've heard it all together in one full record now, the whole all at once thing, twice today. Um, I wrote a bunch of notes down. Um, the, like, there's, let's see, the first track is Price You Pay. The second track is Hot City. The third track is What It Takes. The fourth track is, uh, or fourth track is What It Takes. Third track is Leave the Lights On. Fourth track is What It Takes. Fifth track is Renegade. The sixth track is Can I Get You Home. Can I, can I, no, Can I Get Your Name, rather. Uh, the seventh track is one of the new ones, Have a Good Year. Uh, the eighth track is Gotta Get Ready Now. Um, the ninth track is Big Star. The tenth track is Lucy, one of the new ones. The last three tracks, I believe, are all new, or new, or not released, rather. Lucy was number ten. Number eleven is Where You Gonna Run, and number twelve holiday those last three tracks i hadn't heard either but um i mean i, I got a lot of notes I, mean, I could go through them and just say my first impression my of listening to it is it's it's just a lot of really catchy cleverly well-written songs with little twists and everything i mean um very, a, a lot of high energy on these songs it's not unusual i i am reminded of a couple of their other records i think i I can almost already say I like it more than Foolish Games, although Foolish Games has a, some of their really good, like their best songs, like Shannon especially. But I think this album, beginning to end, is a little bit better than that. Um, but again, I mean, I just heard it. So we'll, we'll see three, five years from now, see if that, that's still the case. But um, Price You Pay is just it's so good. <laughs> uh, so up, uplifting. Uh, a lot of vocal hooks. Um, great piano. That line, the price you pay, better than yesterday. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of like references to locations and stuff. The California weather is getting too weak. Um, it has like a slow piano ragtime part in the middle where Ben Sister does this on this album, and they've done it many times where they just kind of chant along. They don't have any lyrics. Dan just goes da da da. It's almost like a ragtime thing. And then it leads to the line, if you want to play in this world today, there's a price to pay. Uh, but more of the that, yeah, that's the other highlight of this song where it kind of builds up. And they played in the trailer originally when they, last summer when they had the video and then the, a video game. Um, that da 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 da
don't, don't it almost sounds like a sticks thing or a, a yes thing or, or something like that uh, very very poppy or power pop thing very 70s power pop it's like a road song then they met in the last verse they mentioned minnesota and sarasota <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's very earwormy. So the second track, Hot City, is very organ-driven. Um, it's got some dreamy harmonies. Um, you know, it's it's like uh, Price You Pay. It's very energetic. It's not an exception. I mean, it's not quite as fast, but, um, you know, I like Hot City. You know, I've liked it since I've heard it, but I, I still like it. Um, I didn't write too many more notes down about it. But anyway, moving on to the third track, Leave the Lights On. Um... Dreamy harmonies that echo in the background at points in this song. Um, it's very keyboard driven. Um, there's just these driving parts that um, my best friend and the, the line, my best friend in electricity, is so super happy. Reminds me kind of of Queen or Jellyfish. Um, lights on, lights on. They, he repeats that. It builds. Lights on, lights on. Like um, leave the lights on. You know. Anyway. Um, another another track that I've, I really enjoy. So number four, the fourth track is "What It Takes." Great opening rift um, has the line "So you want to be a cowboy?" In the first verse. Uh, I know that you know you got what it takes. Uh, repeated, it repeats a bunch of times. We know that you're that you're. That's weird. Though. We know that you're a fake. He says, "You." I know that that you know what you got. What it takes. Um, the bridge is dreamy. A lot of dreamy moments. I mean, a lot of these songs, it seems like they have these energetic sections, and then they have moments that are dreamy um, and kind of uh, atmospheric. But there's this driving riff on this song that, can, throughout the whole track, that makes a lot of what, what makes it really work. Um, just, just a driving riff. So number five, Renegade. Um, I guess it's about someone who's on the run or whatever, but the line, don't give up, and, like, they're trying to find this person, trying to, like, you know, uh, bring them home. When you're stuck in the darkness, no one will throw you a bone. It won't be long till you find your way home. Uh, it's like someone who's lost, who people are looking for, or, um, but it's also like a rebel. Um, the line, I always knew you were a renegade. Great en upbeat energy about that, you know, very 70s sound, the classic, or you almost yacht rock vibe. Um, we're going to take it day by day by day. He repeats that a lot um, in the second half of it. Um, the, there's a part with the, the keyboard. Like an, pretty much is a keyboard. It sounds, it sounds, like, it sounds often like a synthesizer that's like an organ, but reminds me kind of of Steely Dan, like a, like a 70 Steely Dan. And the drumming is really tight under the snare work. Um, some of the vocal harmonies toward the end. So, okay, number six, Can I Get Your Name? Uh, this, to me, is a song about... Like someone, a guy who maybe meets a girl, doesn't know, like she's, he, she sees her, maybe talks to her, um, but it's kind of a piano ballad, it's a little slower. The first five songs were all pretty upbeat and energetic. Um, it's like a power pop ballad, like a fun, but it's fun, it's uplifting. Um, there's the line, and the music fades away. The ending is, yeah, is really dreamy. We still say the same, and Dan chants, it extends out with a guitar solo over the chanting. I've got to find a way, all the perfect words to say, when the final, yeah, when the final chord is played and the music fades away. It's like, he's thinking of, the, trying to think, find the, the, find the words to say to, to find out this person's name, this girl's name, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's a little slower, but it's still a really good track. Number seven, Have a Good Year. Um, the start, it starts out with piano, like a lot of these songs, but it has this majestic guitar intro. Then it gets quiet. With piano and vocals, um, the line I think we can make it if it all is if if it all if all of this is true. In the bridge, there's a section where he goes, "Have a good year, have a good year, yeah, yeah, have a good year." He stretches out "good" and "year," which ref it the refrain. It's, it's the refrain has like this distortion. That I was like, it's like that that kind of trippy, you know, in Pink Floyd. A lot of bands have used that that trippy distortion. It's really dreamy. Um, the line, can't speak about our troubles with our worries and fears. Uh, have a good year. The piano, yeah, the piano at the end is really majestic, just like the beginning. Um, almost like a march. Um, and then you hear some piano on, over another guitar part. So number eight, gotta get ready. Gotta get ready now. 
um, starts out with both a, like a whistle and an organ. It's it kind of sneaks up on you. It's kind of you know gonna it reminds me of something off of Stories of Brothers. Um, yeah, and like the the vocal style also is more the way he's enunciating at the beginning of this song, especially sounds like the earlier Ben Sinister, like or, like I said, Stories of Brothers stuff off this and stuff off through the Broken City because sometimes he he sings with it's not really a Canadian. They're from Vancouver, Canada, but it's almost like a I don't know, like a youthful accent or or something like that kind of his jeff buckley isms um this it starts out a little bit like that at the beginning but the rest of the vocals don't carry that throughout the song um but uh it gets really playful there's like a ragtime energy at points you got to get ready now you're ready yeah ready now ready now and that almost reminds me of the family crest actually there's a song off of um beneath the brine that kind of ragtime kind of like saloon pub rock kind of thing um it this gets the the energy is really consistent um the keys are tickled i mean yeah i, I think this song might be the one that reminds me most of this or the earlier stuff where they they very piano driven but very kind of organic sounding almost you know i don't know like i don't know like deep purple or not even deep purple it's that that organ is like a Hammond B3 or whatever he's playing. It has that 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 tone. Um, there's a jazzy element. There's a bunch of songs like Mr. Like Dr. Lee and that use that same jazzy piano element um, where they use staccato. There's, they the staccato part with the ragtime hat. It's very punchy. And it's repeated three or four times in the second half of the song. But the buildup is dreamy and he repeats the chorus. Got to get ready now. Got to get get ready now are you ready now he asked the questions are you ready now uh and then you have a guitar solo and some organ at the end so so the the ninth track big star might be the most sort of like access not accessible necessarily is the right word but it's it's a, it's a super fast song and it's not that long it has this guitar riff this keyboard riff that just it's it's almost like a punk track but then it gets proggy. There's a keyboard section in the middle that's totally uh, pro. It's it's weird. That it's like prog punk or punk whatever. Um, yeah, I think overall there's a lot of energetic tracks on this record. But I think this Big Star is probably the most energetic. Uh, it just but then it abruptly ends because it's only like two and a half or three minutes. Um, you know, he's got the chorus. You got to play the game if you want people to remember your name. You're a big star. Uh, but yeah. So number ten. So now we're getting to the last three tracks that I, are are new to me. Lucy has a cool opening guitar riff, and very classic rock sounding. Uh, and then it gets calm and has the line "Waking early" or starts out with "Waking early." Uh, sounds like he says "To the beach where where shit gets done" or get, "Shit gets won." I don't know if it's "Shit gets done" or "Shit gets won." The line "Don't worry, I won't let you fall." Lucy is on the loose again. So it's, I don't know if it's about. Um, I think Lucy is supposed to be about someone who's homeless, like a homeless woman. That's that sleep in subways. I think he says at one point, blame it on something, blame it on nothing but the wind. Why this person has to sleep in subway and they're homeless? This this woman, this girl. Lucy's on the loose, on the loose again. Uh, has some some dreamy chants. That ooh, that that ooh and ohs. You know those that, again. They're using non-verbal, non-literal, not uh, just vocal lines that totally work in the, from a sort of harmonic standpoint. It sounds like the Deer Hunter. That section reminds me of the Deer Hunter, something the Deer Hunter would do. Um, guitar solo, there's, there's a guitar solo that's really tasteful, and then the line, Lucy's on the loose, she's on the loose, she's on the loose again. Um, but yeah, good, really good track, although the, the subject matter's not the most uplifting thing, but the, the m melodic sense and the composition's great. So the track, Where You Gonna Run, which is maybe kind of related to that. This one I think is about like un like the social unrest and I know that they did a video for one of the songs. I think it might have been I'm Tired or one of the songs off of uh, Why Can't We Be Happy that basically showed clips of like George Floyd or some of the marches, some of the Black Lives Matter stuff. And um, this to me is channeling a lot of what's happened the last few years. I was reading what what um, uh, the guitarist. Why am I spacing on his name? Um, Joseph, uh, here, I guess I can find out. Um, yeah, or it was Matt. It was Matt, actually. Matt wrote, wrote, he wrote on Facebook about this record, and 
how that, you know, since the last record, I mean, Why Can't We Be Happy came out during COVID, but that was all written before that, pretty much. Um, I can see why the, you know, the social unrest and, you know, so I mean, I just talk about the song, Where Are You Gonna Run? It's an odd intro. It's got almost like a vaudevillian texture. Um, um, and then it, it sounds like, yeah, like something from the 30s, 40s, like that the Deer Hunter or St. Vincent one point used or Dirt Per Robbins. Um, the line, where are you going to run to? Where are you going to hide? We're going to stand up for our rights while you're choking on your pride. I don't know that it's addressing like the unrest of people that are in society that are, you know, holding you back, you know, and why, why a lot of the unrest has happened the last few years. Um, but then it has like an upbeat snare part that comes in and um, the line, going around to the corner store, buy yourself a gun. Ladies, don't, don't you dare make a choice. Um, yeah, I mean, social unrest, looting, gun, you know, theft, kids and gangs. That that's what it kind of reminds me. It captures lyrically, um, you know, it's kind of like talking, like narrative. Um, calms down eventually, though. Where you're gonna run? Where you're gonna hide? Repeat. It's repeated a few different times, three or four times, but slower and uh, built into like a really good guitar riff. And uh, yeah, there's one issue I have with this song. I I do notice the the cymbals were clipping a little bit. I mean, it's against Spotify. I don't know right now. I didn't. It might be uploaded onto their Bandcamp at some point. And I can also say that they have some demos and stuff I've never heard, which I've never. I could do a review at some point of that. It came out a few years ago on their Bandcamp, on Ben Sinister's Bandcamp. Um, but you know, why, why can't we be happy? Is not on there either. So I don't know how much they're using Bandcamp anymore. So the last track, um, Holiday, uh, another new, another track I, I hadn't heard until today. It's the most sort of slower tempo, dreamy song, but it's it's uplifting. It's like it's got this jazzy guitar intro. It's very clean. It reminds me of like what Caddisfly or like Foles might do. That the guitar, t the tone is very similar, um, but it's dreamy and smooth. It's, it's got a few lines. One line: I know a guy who knows a guy who who who's on the inside. He only shares his tips with me. I have a ticket to ride. That, that to me reminds me of like Saul, you know Saul Goodman, you know Jimmy. From Better Call Saul, and um, more specifically from Breaking Bad, he goes, "I know a guy who knows a guy, the the, the guy who disappears a minute, the disappear guy." Um, and people use that phrase; they've been using that phrase a lot more recently. You know, kind of like it is what it is. I know a guy who knows a guy. Um, the line, "Let me share my secrets. I won't tell you no lies." Then he says, "It sounds like dang Brian Adams cuts like a knife." Because I think is that maybe one of Brian Adams' songs cut like that? Maybe a reference. Just like Ticket to Ride probably was could have been like a Beatles reference, of course. Um, I think Brian Adams might have a, 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 a song or a lyric that, that has that says cuts like a knife. But that wasn't the, the whole f um, part of the vote, that, that, that verse, but I just, I just got that part down. Um, but this track is kind of epic in some ways. You got, then you got the line, yeah, the middle bridge has, yeah, has this cool dr dreamy section with the drums and background vocals creating a cool atmosphere. Um, the chorus is repeated a few times, including one where Dan sounds, the very, toward the end, sounds like he's singing in a falsetto. Uh, it's the same chorus um, about Holiday. Uh, I don't know if I got the, the, the actual chorus down here. Uh, but he mentions, you know, it's a holiday. You know, I know, I didn't, I didn't actually get it. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right. I missed it. So there's a line that goes, going on a holiday to a galaxy far. This is the chorus far away where I'm po I'm popping like champagne I think that's what he says like I'm on the Milky Way holiday holiday that to me sounds like Mayor Hawthorne kind of um, or maybe tuxedo but yeah I mean the holiday is a good track it's a good way to end the album um, and it's a little slower tempo I, I'd say there's 12 songs on here at least I'd say at least eight of the maybe seven or eight of the songs maybe are the energy is very consistent which in a sense, this record, you could say, in a way, it's kind of a, it has a sameness in a sense, you know, like some of the other records, but it doesn't really seem to matter. I think every song has an identity still where they have a different twist, a different texture, the different kind of lyrics. Um, just even just loving the different, like, vocal parts, the little, you know, catchy, uh, almost power pop vocal parts in, like, four or five songs gives reason to go back to this record. Um... Is it, you know, their best record? I, I don't know if I'd go that far. Um, but, I mean, again, I've, I've only heard the whole thing a few times. And uh, it's one, I definitely am 
we did my, you know, I didn't really, doesn't a full ranking, but when we do the mid-season rankings, it's, it's certainly, you know, and I have my bias because I've loved this band for whatever it was, 2000, when did I get into them? 2006. So, you know, for 18, 18 years, I've been a fan of this band and they haven't put out, even, you know, Foolish Games, I like a lot of that record. Every record they put out, and this is their sixth full-length record, um, you know, mostly great things. So, what do you think of this? Have you heard it uh, or any of the songs? I'd love to hear that, but uh, if you not, I'll link the, uh, the stream on the Spotify link and everything like that. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. One more point that I didn't stress enough about it. I just wanted to... Um, I think I did say, on Big Star, I know people, the prog heads want their prog. Even though that song is shorter, the keyboard section in the middle is very proggy. Like it has a, it's very, it's a, it's, it's very much of like a Genesis or, or yes or or whatever, uh, or Rush guitar like keyboard, uh, guitar keyboard uh, featured solo. So, <laughs> I guess you know if you've never heard Ben Sinister before, Big Star wouldn't be a bad place. But again, it that song has like a punk element and then a, a very energetic power pop element. But then it has the prog. I mean, they're, most of their songs most of their songs have some sort of prog element. Not all of them, but a lot of them. But it's just, you know, not their 100% main focus. But um, that track, I know there's so many prog heads that want, you know, they want their prog. should maybe get, give that track Big Star a go if you don't listen to any other song on this record. Um, that would be one. I would just listen to the whole thing. Or I'd, list, list, I'd, I'd listen to Price You Pay. Price You Pay is probably my favorite track if I'm picking one still. Um, but I mean, some of these songs are just, I'm going to grow, grow to like more and more. Renegade and Can I Get Your Name, uh, Have a Good Year. So, um, yeah, big thumbs up, sorry. Big, th big thumbs up for um, mostly great things from Ben's sister. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.